the most powerful church in whole Europe. The Kingdom Church presents Bishop Climate Ministries A place where the captives are set free and where the members are wealthy, healthy, and wise. Your breakthrough is now. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Join the vision and be free. of essence begins you need to pray somebody say pray somebody say push somebody say push in short p-u-s-h means pray until something happens so you, you cannot just be there and you're just sticking your tongue out no 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 no, no, no. you need to pray now listen to me and i cannot pray for you that time you're gonna pray for yourself you see, they knew, the Bible tells us, and when the time for the burning of incense came, all assembled, all, 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 all assembled together. All assembled, all assembled worshippers were praying outside. Every time in the Bible when there is a burning of, of incense, automatically angels begins to move around. In this place, angels are about to move around. There are many testimonies that are here. You know, angels will be so angels will so you need to pray. You need to pray because there is something that happens. There is something that happens when when it comes to the burning on the east. The Bible tells us in verse 11 says the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. So you begin to see the angels always. Why did the angel stand on the right hand side of where, where the incense was? Why did he stand there? Why? Why? What is it this about? What is this? Why? And the Bible says, verse 12 says, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. Some of you here now, get yourself ready. You are going to see angels today. So when you begin to feel like shaking, shaking, that means the power of God. Some of you here now, whatever has been disturbing you, it, especially if you are here and there was a spell that was cast on you, you are here, there are some negative words which were spoken in you, you are here, you are fed with witchcraft when the, when the burning of the incense takes place and the angel stands next to you, anything that has been sticking on you, that is of not, of not God, it's going to leave. If you feel like screaming, screaming it out. If you feel like vomiting, vomit it out. If you feel whatever it is, just get yourself ready. You need to you see expectation is the atmosphere of miracles. Some of you here right now, you didn't even know. You went somewhere and while you did not know, you borrowed somebody cream and some of them, maybe somebody gave you something and you put on. Some of you here, maybe, maybe somebody gave you clothes uh, but you don't realize they were putting just like how you put a, a stamp is put on an envelope to get to where it's supposed to be. Some of you right now, there were some demonic stamps people put on you. A stamp of poverty and luck and now it's job or the job of that thing they put on you is to drive you all the way to the brink of destruction, to the brink of death today anything that has been sticking in your life anything that has become a hindrance in your life today may the, may the angels of the Lord break those chains just like what happened to where when Peter was praying the Bible said the angel appeared to him and tapped on his shoulders and said follow me as he was walking every chain every doors were opening automatically somebody here I hear automatic blessing I hear automatic favor I hear here automatic breakthrough we will be going to places like this i see automatic interviews i see automatic houses i see automatic husband automatic children automatic customers automatic success automatic miracles receive it in jesus name and the bible tells us verse 13 says but the angel said to him do not do not be afraid zachariah your prayers have been heard. Your prayers. Well, when were they heard? Because that time, remember Zechariah by lot, 
by lot it, that will only happen once once because they were is a is a priest that means there are many whatever it is so that is once in a lifetime that was once in a lifetime for him to be able to do what he did he was not doing it all the time no because by that time the scholars tell us there were almost about hundreds and hundreds of other priests so it happened that time when he was chosen as he was offering that incense he was praying while he was there people were praying outside he began to pray and while he's there he's praying say god bless me i need a child i need a child i need a child bless me indeed god did me manifest children now god did me manifest children now while he was there the angels say don't be afraid zachariah your prayers has been hard your wife will bear a son and you are to give him the name john somebody here today you're going to get a complete revelation about your life while you are here you're going to have a vision some of you you're about to be slain in the spirit you are about to see the vision you're going to see everything you're going to see where your house is going to be even right now while you are still single you're going to see who your husband is you're going to even see the children that are not yet born you're going to see them i am speaking to somebody oh can i get a witness in this place don't do you understand what i'm telling you what a joy is it to know which way to go some of you right now god is going to be able to show you you're going to have a vision of that house of that job you even you're going to have a vision of your past passport number this is the time for you to have a complete the angel even told him his name is going to be John today as you begin to pray today as you begin to pray get yourself ready that is why you need to focus you need to focus you because this place is going to be covered with the glory of the lord and that time right now you need to tap and say because the angels will be around and, and the bible tells us verse 14 says he will be a joy and delight to you you will rejoice because of his birth there is somebody here oh my god for all these years you have lived in shame but god says joy is coming you are going to delight in your new lifestyle you are going to delight in your new john you are going to be so happy i don't know what your john is your john could be a new car your john could be your status your john could be a good marriage your john could be a new business your john could be whatever it is am i speaking to somebody here right now stand up wherever you are and begin to wave your hands right now in the name of jesus why because i see you walking in favor i see you rejoicing i see you happy i see you success i see a miracle today it's about to be part in your life somebody here somebody here something is about to be birthed in your life greatness is about to be birthed in your life destiny is about to be birthed in your life uh, come on somebody begin to praise the lord 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 his presence is here his presence is here his presence is here Somebody here. Listen. Listen. Prayers mixed with incense are never forgotten. And I need you when, when that incense begins to burn. You need to pray like nobody's business. You need to zo zoom in to your brethren. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation 5:8 even we're not dealing with the old testament we just want to deal with the new testament to let you know as a born again christian if anybody ever tell you that this burning of incense it's not there then they don't know what the future holds for them the bible says and when you're taking it the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamp each one had a harp and they were holding a golden bowl full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. The Bible said the 24 elders, give me, give me. The Bible said the 24, the 24 elders. The Bible said they were holding the golden bowl.
full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They fell before the lamp. This morning, Rebaba Sata. Yes. This is what God says. There are two types of prayers that are answered in heaven. There are prayers, the Bible tells us. There are prayers where your tears are put on the bottle to be remembered. That is exactly what happened to the children of Israel. Over half a million people left Egypt. But only less than a hundred thousand were able to cross to the promised land. They died in the wilderness. Yet God heard their prayer. But he never allowed them to get in. But their children enjoyed their blessing. But there is another people like Joshua and Caleb. Their prayers were not on a bottle. Their prayers were answered. They lived to see and enjoy their blessing. The Bible tells us when Joshua was full of all, after many, many years, he lived long. There are some people here, because of some situation that had happened in your life, things in the realm of the spirit were put on hold. But now, God says, is going to reconsider your situation today. And you are going, God is about, are you ready? What were, Pastor, what were these 12 elders trying to do? These elders, 24 hours, they were trying to say, God, look at this, those people are still on earth. As we bow down to the Lamb, Lord, please, 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 we ask you, remember them today. Let them live to enjoy and to see your blessing. I am speaking to somebody here. You are praying, you are sowing, your faithfulness to God is not going to go unnoticed. It must produce results. The days of your enemies attending your funeral and say they prayed and nothing happened, that is not going to happen. You are going to enjoy your blessing. You are going to enjoy your favor. If you believe it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Come down to the Kingdom Church in London and attend the service everyone is talking about. The fire service. God wants to fight all your battles. Write down everything that is bringing confusion, lack into your life. Take a leap of faith and bring a copy of those bills and documents. Many have put their prayer requests into the fire and testified of miracles of healing, deaths and court cases being cancelled. Come and join us every last Friday of the month at 7.30 p.m. here at the Kingdom Church, a place where the captives are truly set free. Fine, Sister Pe. You, ma'am, and I'm honored to meet you for the first time. Thank you. Um, my story is a long story. I'll Make try, it short I'll and try brief. And cut it short. Yes. I came here for the fire service once uh -huh. last year. Uh -huh. well, after you advised me to bring something to the fire, uh -huh. um, it was a written warning from from my manager, my former manager. I remember. Um, for sickness uh -huh. and you say bring it to the fire so I came in person and I remember you uh, you were preaching about this troublemaker Ekan and I was sitting down there and you came around there and you said uh, in fact you, you said um, to everybody say with me in the name of Jesus 
every Ekan in my life die by fire. And you said, say Ekan, why have you troubled me today? God will trouble, trouble you. you today. And you said, Sister Peggy, what is God to, going to do today? I said, he's going to trouble my enemies today. You said, when? Today you were, you were talking to me. And I thought, wow. So anyway, I dropped whatever I dropped in the fire. And I went home. I didn't believe in the fire. And I thought, does it work? Um, I felt a bit guilty. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Can I do that <laughs> anyway? So I was facing problems at work. My, my former manager was there for two years. I'd been there for 11 years. Three years was, well, eight years of the, those 11 years was um, I was an assistant manager. So when she came in, she used me to assist her. And when she got tired of me, she wanted to get rid of me, so she started looking for trouble. It, oh, conspiring with everybody. Um, she got everybody on her side, people I was working with, using people under me to undermine me, senior people all the way to the chief executive um, to get rid of me. I didn't have a bad record. Anyway, I came back in uh, September, here yeah, and I came back in, in November. In October, before I came in November, she called me, she came in the office, there was lots of people in there, and she goes, when you finish what you are doing, I want to, you to do clinical supervision with me. I said, yes, when I finish what I'm doing, I will come. She walked to the door, and she turned around and says, you're finished now, you're coming with me, and I thought, pardon? Anyway, so I followed and I thought, God, what do I do now? I sat with her in a meeting room. She sat opposite me and she says, she had a diary and lots of paperwork. She had prepared. She, this was pre-planned. So something told me, refuse this supervision. I just said, for the first time in 11 years, I'm refusing this supervision. So she says, what? I said, I'm not having supervision, not today. And if I continue feeling like this, I said, you are looking or talking to a very agitated assistant manager. So it's not right that we have supervision. She says, oh, okay, tomorrow, a senior manager will sit down with the, both of us. He wants to meet us. I said, okay, bring it on. That following day, this was the 14th of October, the following day, the 15th of October, we had a staff meeting. After the staff meeting, this service manager came. And all he said to me was, things are going to change here. And you are moving. And I thought, wow, moving where? And how did this come about? You are moving somewhere. And I said, can you explain? Put your cards on the table and tell me uh -huh. where this all came from. Oh, we are not getting rid of you. And opportunities are risen and you need to go and develop. And I thought, I said, give me three days. This was a Wednesday. I said, on Friday, I'll give you my answer. Not to say no or not to say I'm going, but I'll give you my answer. Now, between Wednesday and Friday, they were busy in meetings. Senior consultants had met with somebody who was under me to offer them my job. They were telling everybody how useless I was. She's useless. She needs moving. I thought, what do I do? There's a pastor I pray with in here. Wherever she is, I send her emails. She, gives, she says, ask her for God for wisdom. So she's praying for me. I'm asking God for wisdom. On the third day, I said, I'm accepting that offer. Even though I didn't want to go, but I said, I'm accepting that offer. Something told me, accept that offer and don't do nothing. That Friday, there was a huge meeting in the organization. Senior managers had attended. And these managers, my immediate manager and this service manager who had met me, were announced that that useless assistant manager is being moved. And this is what we do with the useless assistant managers. Oh, I was humiliated. I heard about it because there are people, there's, there's always a few of them, the one you were talking about, who like talking about telling the you good gossip, gossip, good gossip. This is what is going down. And I thought, okay, let me start packing. <laughs> start 
started packing and um, little did I know that people who had worked with me for many years, it upset them so much. God used those people too cause havoc for these senior managers and manager. They requested the transfers, some went off sick with the stress. Some were saying, why is she moving? You better explain to us who went to their union reps. A union rep says, what is this I hear Peggy is moving? We are coming to a meeting. Now this meeting was set up for the um, 5th of November. We went to the meeting, I didn't talk. Something told me, eat a chill pill and sit and listen. Oh, the, the manager came in and she was told to go out. So senior managers and union reps were there and all the staff were asked to start talking. Oh my God, everything that was happening, this woman was horrible. She was horrible, not just to me, but to the staff as well. Um, this caused this manager to go off sick for the following day. She had never been sick before. So the first thing that happened to that woman is she went off sick for two months. Two months? Two months. Now then she, uh, the senior managers are stuck. I'm going. They don't have a manager here now. What do they do? They came begging to ask me to manage the place. And I managed the place for five months, two days, uh, two weeks. They never paid me. Any time I started talking about money, oh, it's part of your job. But I'll tell you what God gave me that they will never take away from me is nothing went wrong for those five months. Um, all those who were off sick, I worked with HR and brought them back. For five months, we never had a sickness record. And uh, when this manager then finally came back, she wants to come back now, and they want to use me to face her back into work, I said, no, no, thank you. I'm not the right person to face my senior manager back into work. Now, <laughs> she was stuck. All these senior managers are scratching their heads. What do we do now? And I said, if she's coming, I'm going, I'm not working with her here. They, because during the five months, we had inspectors who came in, we have in, um, the monitors called the CQC, they came in, they were pleased. Commissioners came in, they were pleased. All these people who had jumped on the bandwagon with this manager of mine, they were all pleased. Now, <laughs> to let me go, and I kept on saying, I need to go. No, we can't let you go, look at what you have done. You turned this place around, and all this, and all that, and the other. They made a leave. Number two, what happened to her was, she was demoted. She is now an assistant manager. Number three, she was moved out of my place. So I'm not working with her anymore. Then the senior manager who was pulling strings, God gave him a good job somewhere away from the organization and close to 100 grand a year. And I hear he walked out of the job after two days. Mm. After two days, 100 grand, walk away. He walked away after two days. So, <laughs> that fire of yours, <laughs> What can you tell people about the fire service here? I, mean, I, I remember before you... We go, before we go further, yes. you used to be sick. Yes. You are always off oh, sick. Oh, I need to tell you about that. The whole year, I never went off sick. Since, since you healed me of asthma here in June, I never went since off June, since last, June. no since, more. Since June. This woman that you see here, listen, this woman that you see here, she was always sick, 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 sick in the working place. Until when she came here last year, June, I prayed for her, drove out that spirit of asthma out of her life. Since that day, 
she has never been sick again somebody give jesus but this is what i want you to hear this is another testimony but you see that manager was taking advantage of her what because something was making her sick so that manager wanted to get rid of her that's the reason why she had all those notes of her being off sick and that she would try and try and try and try until i told her peggy come over to london come here you need to come here you need to come and experience the power of god how many of you remember that day here in this place where she's standing that's why when i laid my hand on her and i drove up that asthmatic spirit out of her life she began to cough and since that day no more asthma somebody gave jesus a mind of praise. now now what i really like about you were feeling guilty when you put their name in the fire someone say hallelujah someone say christianity but you see, I have a reason to believe that sickness she was going through was not a normal sickness. Because what happened immediately when her enemy was exposed, the following day, she went off sick for two months. Every sickness that your enemy has put on you, we send it back to the center. Every sickness they have put upon your children, we send it back to the center. So what can you tell some people here about this fire service? Because since then, every end of the month, I've been seeing your list. It keep coming in capital letters. Oh, wow. Um, I remember one time you said, even if you don't believe, just say, I believe, I receive. So that day, the day I came for the fire service, I just said, I believe, I receive. And when I saw the results, I thought, wow. Please believe and receive because your miracle is on the way. If it, God could do it for me after one visit, he can do it for you. Somebody give Jesus a man of praise. Thank you for watching Bishop Climate TV. I know you have been blessed. Here are four ways you can connect to the prophet today. One, call now, 4420-8114-9390 for prayer. Two, come during free prophetic hour and meet the man of God personally. Every Sunday between 9 to 10 a.m., no appointment needed. Three, attend our powerful miracle services, Friday, 7.30 p.m., Sunday at 11 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. And four, visit our website, www.bishopclimate.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Bishop Climate Ministries, a place where the captives are set free.